These Olympics finally are here. I'm not going to be whining about what I want. I'll take what we got. I have all six Americans meddling. I have all six Americans. Elor. I'm smart money. Yeah, I'm selling the house. Spencer and uh, Simone Biles. Okay, I kind of have a comparison between them. Let me tell you that comparison. Here's mine. I'd like to hear if you... Woo! Whoa! All right, folks, welcome back to PEG Wrestling. We are here. Olympics are right around the corner, so we're going to break down Olympic previews. About also, time. the betting odds have changed in the Olympics. It's about time. We talked about smart money, dumb money on Friday's show, and we're going to see where the smart money, dumb money is now, maybe. Also, the women's odds are out. And, uh, by the way, our number one wow. smart money odds from last week, those odds moved. We moved those odds. Big time. Spencer Lee was I, plus 500. Now he's plus 200, which yeah. means a lot of money coming in on Spencer. Anyway, in addition to that, folks, your all-star classic, ideal yeah, I matchups. Talk, uh, I have my dream all-star classic matchups. Okay. Uh, if we I'm get sure half of gonna... these, we get half of these. We're in for a party, people. A <laughs> party. Yeah. Okay, we got that. But first, folks, before we get into it, on a lot more in addition to that. But first, comment of the week. Okay. Last week it was uh, well, we didn't we missed our show last week. My travel well, story coming well, at the what? end of the show. Why? Why? Well, well, I'll tell you we that. Get into Take that. a couple minutes on that. But uh, yeah, Frankie Cal says, "Love your dad, but the marijuana smoke from my state of uh, California got to him. Who has the money to pay Tom Cruise or Ashton Kutcher?" As you were. These people with all this money, it's time they they stop. Stop already. Let's get some money out. Get some money out and start. I got a suggestion, by the way, coming up for these big money people, but I don't want to get off track. We have the Olympics, and finally they're here. Zach. Olympics are right around the corner. and In fact, I'm going to repost uh, some of the interviews that I did uh, from a month or two ago at the training week with some of our Olympians throughout this week. Good idea, because them interviews have, have gotten me more engaged in the ladies' side of things than I've ever been. I'm pumped. Yeah. For the, the ladies. Some interesting odds in the women's as Boy, well. Boy, that might have sounded wrong. <laughs> we know what you meant. <laughs> well, dang, we know on. what you meant. I'll clip that out and repost it. <laughs> weird oh, no. no. <laughs> Pam, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, look, look, I am pumped about these Olympics. Finally. It's the Wrestling Super Bowl. It's the Wrestling Super Bowl. And every wrestler in the world considers this the Super Bowl. And, you know, I might as well get right into it before I give, like, my predictions on how I think it's going to. But, you know, the thing is, we have big money people out there that love wrestling, and they're starting to throw money at the wrestling. But the the route everyone is going is I'm throwing money to my team or my state. I want to see Oklahoma uh, thrive in this state. Or or Penn State's got their money guy. Iowa's got their money but guy out there buying buildings and stuff. Dude, you guys that have all this money, just consider this. That's all I'm saying. How much more fun would it be to put money into the sport as a whole? Now, where am I going with this? I'm all for the Olympics. I like the Olympics. I give up. If it's freestyle, it's freestyle. Whatever. I'm not going to get into that debate. But my beef is 16 per bracket? Huh. Zach, huh? That, why can't we at least have 32? And by the way, I'd rather have a full, full elimination, this repertoire, or how do you say that? I, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I, I might be done, but if my guy wins, then I might be able to wrestle again. Look, a full, well, we can't have... That doesn't seem very American. We, this is the Super Bowl wrestling. Let's have a full gamut of wrestling. That's ha what I'm rooting for here is the most wrestling possible. So I propose one of these big dogs with the money. Let's make our own tournament. Let's have the 32 best guys in the world. Oh, how are you going to do that? Well, they start to see the prize money. They'll be there and make it no doubt over time. This will be their Super Bowl. If that's where the money's at, because I know they make some money off the Olympics and all, but I'm talking real money. And you, all you 
you big dogs with the billions in your back pocket you won't even know it's gone look this i just want a bigger bracket how cool would it be to have yazdani brooks david taylor valencia and there's some others all in that bracket all wrestling for like a million dollar top prize or something yeah and, and you yeah brooks just beat david teller well that was for you know maybe seating purposes or to be the official member of our team look they have more than one person per country if it's like uh don't like gymnastics all around couldn't U.S. have more than one person in that all around? Yes. Or say the 100-yard dash, you know, uh, every American won their heat. We got three Americans in the, the 10 or 12 that are trying to, to win that 100-meter dash or wh whatever. Look, I understand the angle of this is country against country. I just want the greatest wrestlers in the world all in one bracket for the Super Bowl. Is that... Does that sound crazy? Actually, it sounds reasonable, and I'll throw actually a very similar comparison to what the um, who are the brothers who started the UFC? But that's essentially exactly what they did. They just they had a lot of money, and as a, as a couple brothers, and they started the UFC. And now everyone thinks it was Dana White who started. It wasn't Dana White? I mean, he was heavily involved, but the money came from these brothers, and that's how the UFC got started. So don't tell me that's not a feasible a feasible yes. solution. I mean. Yep. If, if we had a billion dollars, we would have that tournament and it would be more attended and probably like wrestlers would be more intrigued in that just for the money. Right. Than well, the Olympics, you know, these people that are throwing big bucks into this sport, but into their individual teams, that's helpful. That is helpful. And it's helpful the whole way down the line. The little kid that's picking out his sport for the very first time, the one he's going to kind of adopt as his own sport. He knows there's actually money, and I hate everything being about money. It, you know, we've seen the, uh, the one video, which I could not agree with more. It's the love of competition. It's not about winning. It's not about losing. It's not about the money. It's about you love competing so bad. That is your driving force. That is the winning hand, by the way. Okay, by the way, I, I got to say, that. I liked your little video about Penn State. The law of reversed effort. I'll I show that. absolutely agree. That's a major, major factor. And very well done, too. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll get. I'll touch on that. But first, I want to clarify. It was Franklin and Lorenzo Fertitta who started the UFC. Those brothers were the money. But I want to counter your argument on you love the uh, just competing. Okay? So, if you just love competing, yeah. why wouldn't you choose <laughs> competition that also results in money? It is the same thing. Well, they put all this time and work into it. They deserve some money. They they don't have time to be working at a part-time job. They're trying to yeah, become the best in this sport they can. We like them doing that because we're entertained by their awesomeness on a mat. Okay, but I, I'm countering all the truists out there. They really love the sport. You got to do it just for competing and all that. Come on. I can also compete and make money in this sport. So okay. don't give me the old heartfelt, you got to do it because you love it. No, <laughs> let's fix it. Let's get some people paid. All right. right? Get I some know. money involved. I agree. I know. Where yeah. are uh, the Fertitta brothers in wrestling? We need them. Well, the real key there was the Dana and Whites and the Joe Rogans. Well, the promoter. The, is what yeah. took it to the wow, level. the marketing of but what they... But it started with the money. Yes. It starts with the money. And yeah. then you need to write pieces like promoters like Dana White. But yeah, by I, the way, I love Dana White. How entertaining is Dana White? Oh. I mean, that dude is a dog. Yeah. Straight up. And dog. Rogan is too. How is he? Isn't he the biggest uh, podcast in the world? Yeah, Rogan is. Yeah. I mean, it's just, they are entertaining. And I, I yeah, I'm, I'm with I, you. I listen to it. I just, real quick, I want to, I love Dana White because one of his sponsors just tried to tell him to take down a political post because he was in favor of someone, take a wild guess. And he said, no. He said, you do not tell me what to do. Get out. No one tells Dana White what to do. That's why I love that man. I mean, he, he runs his business and does not care. Yes. But yes. I. Well, I got to tell get you. Get into the predictions, right? Folks, these Olympics finally are here. I'm not going to be whining about what I want. I'll take what we got. And they're here. And it is the Super Bowl, and it's going to be exciting. And even though the whole disappointment with the Russians, we still got just dynamite 
matchups happening. And yes, very intriguing questions are going to get answered during these Olympics. Both, Legends will be made. Both or... the men and the women's side. Oh, yeah. And I, I tell you, right now, you're, you're all going to think, well, that's biased, Wayne. Okay, let's just see afterwards. I have all six Americans meddling. I have all six of them. Get this, Whoa, folks. Okay. I have three gold. I have Dake, Spencer, and I have Brooks beating Yazdani. I do. Brooks, I'm telling you, I know Yazdani looked great that last time out. And, and oh, he's he is very good. I We all know that. Mm-hmm. We see Brooks like this, Zach, and it's been like this for a while. And it ain't stopping. And I'm a believer. Well, that's not a far cry stretch there because Brooks last time we checked was plus 150 on the odds. That basically means he's the second favorite in that weight class um, to the aforementioned guy there. And uh, so Brooks, I could see that. That w- that was included in our smart money. But let's start at the 57 because Spencer Lee on Friday's show was plus 500 money. Yes. Has now come down. We said that was smart money then. It's now come down to he's the second favorite at plus 200. Easy. Whoa! That's easy to understand. To Michik, who's plus one twenty-five, then we uh, I'll throw up the odds there on the. But I've now officially moved him from smart money into dumb money. Those odds move too, too much. Yeah, yeah. Loser. But you're saying he's going to win, which would mean it's. Still I, smart I have. Money. Here's the thing about Spencer. Anyone that's really followed wrestling closely have watched uh, Spencer back in his youth when he was winning world championships and stuff. And there's PA no boy. there's no doubt that you can see Spencer's back on track. You know, I kind of compare Spencer and uh, Simone Biles. Okay. I kind of have a comparison between them. Let me tell you that comparison. Simone Biles was coming into the last Olympics, and every media person out there jumped on, this is the most amazing gymnast of all time second place isn't even close and this just rained showered on top of her it's impossible for her to have it all completely turned off now there are well, i understand she ended up not even competing right <laughs> yes yeah, she, she got the twisties what what do i consider the twisties yeah. too much pressure it, it pressure got to, and now i'm not blasting simone biles i think 99 percent of us would all kind of cave to yeah. such ridiculous pressure put on. Now, not out to blast the brands, but there was a couple comments coming the brands way about Spencer not long ago. Spencer, the greatest wrestler of all time, any era, any country, all <laughs> time I've ever seen. Now, dude, 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 dude. You cannot tell me I see a difference in Spencer then and I see a difference in Spencer now. And he just looks like the way the world's off. I don't care no more. No more of the greatest of all time. I got you can tell he's focused in on this goal and it was just a distraction. I mean, you're hearing that about Zach is the greatest podcast uh, auditor or editor of all time there's never been any like you you sit down to thank you there's, finally you sit down to I edit a praise you no. sit down to edit a podcast you're gonna be a little nerved up man i got a lot yeah. to live up to yeah here. whoa whoa i am okay <laughs> i'm the best in the whole world of all time i was kind of joking when i was saying that but yeah now if it you guys paralyzes me that, you maybe it paralyzes you i'm telling you spencer all that crap is gone, and quite frankly, I'm rooting for Simone Biles. It'd be a very successful story. They said when she came back, Zach, she had to, it was such a slow process. Like, she had to come back and do one flip. That was it. She came back the next day, did maybe two flips. Wow. That was it. You know, it, to get back on that beam. A couple seconds. That was it. And it was like, it was a building process. Now, I don't understand all of gymnastics and the, the twisties. They got to come up with a better name than that because that just sounds a little fakey, doesn't it? I mean, and it probably is a real thing. The twisties. You know, I get twisties. Well, in golf, they call it the, the yips. 
The yips. Yeah, in golf they call it the yips. Well, I, I, I get the yips and twisties on certain <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> you know, you're where me. I just bomb. Yeah, you're telling me no. I, I kind of feel you, like no, I'm that's a good comparison. Up. That's a good comparison. I like that. But here's the thing. Ironically, now Spencer is wrestling to uh, maybe make his mark as one of the greatest of all time. And I'll say this: he just seems looser, and yes. he just laughs more. He seems like he's smiling oh, he more. Just, he looks. Totally focused on what's at hand to me. And it's just the subtle little body language. And us as fans, we don't have much. I don't get to sit down and talk with Spencer and have in-depth conversation with Spencer. I'm reading body language. And I'm telling you from body language right now, um, and I'm, I don't think Spencer listens because I don't want to put pressure on the guy, I'd be shocked if he loses in the, these Olympics. Wow. It could it happen? We're talking about the best wrestlers in the world. Yes. Yes, it could happen. Same with all these. Even everybody's got Dake. Pencil him in. Biggest, isn't he Minus 1,000. You never bet a minus 1,000 as someone commented on that last episode. Yeah, well, you know, the last Olympics when he got shocked and teched. Yeah. That, no, we didn't even know that guy. There's no way he's minus a thousand. Those are that, so, that those odds are so wrong. Yeah. I bet I'm betting that's dumb money. I'm betting someone else in that weight class just because it's the odds are. <laughs> well, I I like Dakes and I have by the way I have Snyder getting silver. I have Dake, uh Spencer and Brooks getting gold. What? I have Snyder getting silver and I have uh, Paris and Zane getting bronze. And Zane's got a war. To get through, but I've seen enough. Zane from plus that dude nine hundred. The last time we checked, I've seen enough from Zane. I'm convinced he's going to uh, be healed up. No cut on his forehead. Yeah, yeah, and I I tell you the the whole thing with the Olympics. I'm excited about it, and it means all everything. And that's what's so exciting about it. And I'm more engaged with the women now, and watching them, and getting feeling like I know them personally. Yeah, okay. from these interviews. So I'm engaged now. So I highly recommend any of you watch uh, any of Zach's interviews. I think Flo's got some interviews. Any interviews you can get get as get as engaged as possible. It makes it puts fun into this. Well, I'm I want to throw up the women's uh, odds, but before I do that, if you had to predict maybe one of these wrestlers to underperform, one of these Americans. In this, who who would it be and why? And I'll give you mine. Well, I would I would say I would say it looks like Zane under, underperformed because he didn't medal. Who knows? He went one and one or whatever the case. That is such a brutal bracket that it kind of looks like he underperformed. That that's just that bracket's nuts. I guess the second one would be maybe Snyder. But really? It, no, that's wrong. It's okay. The one I'm a little concerned about is Paris. Is the first time I'm on not, this kind of stage? No, I'm Come not. Come on now. No. Would it shock you if he lost early? No, I I don't think so. I I think I he's mean got, we talked. He's got with Bormet him. training him up over there. I know, we, we but know boy, Bormet's he's got his head hard. straight on straight and we're still looking to hear from Bormet. <laughs> Marty, where is that trophy? <laughs> Where's that trophy, Marty? Let me, let me just say, <laughs> now that you brought that up, you bought into that. Marty's never met Bormet in his Marty's, life. I know. He's, fake. he's never met him in his life. And you know what? Uh, us out, Marty, yeah, dude. me and Cal. Marty, guess what? Me and Cal have lunch every Sunday. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Marty. Be I'm like, just kidding, buddy. I'd be like, uh, I ran, remember we met um, Casey Cunningham? Yes. And very, yes. very brief, but dude. maybe we said, dude, we're boys with Casey. Yeah, we know Casey well. No, I didn't feel, I didn't feel <laughs> it. Tough. You didn't I feel that to connection? Start, I didn't feel I, it either, no, dude. <laughs> I, I was going to, I was looking for an angle to come in with a little joke, and I thought, dude, this guy is just. He's sensible. He's not immature. Like I know. Me. In my head, I was telling uh, like myself, I, Dad, don't do a joke. Don't do a joke. <laughs> don't do a joke, Dad. I was going to do a joke, Zach. And I, I thought, know. no, no. I, You know what? It took me 60 years. I can realize when just, you know what? Just say yes. Nod your head. Be courteous because your jokes aren't fitting right now. Yeah. They're yeah. just not. That's this why. guy is. 
That's so why. sensible. <laughs> Everything is sensible. And it's like, yeah, I know. Very grounded. Very grounded. It That's seems it. like if you grounded, said something a little sensible, off, the he's opposite probably thinking, of me. you are a Looney Tune, dude. Oh, Get yes. Oh, yes. Get out of here, Looney Tunes. <laughs> now, you talk about... Uh, Looney Tunes. Um, we get commenters, Zach. Hold that... on before we go there. <laughs> women's odds, dude. Before we move oh, on from the Olympics, okay. I want to put up the women's odds here because some of these are a little okay. surprising. All okay, right. and uh, starting at 57 kilogram, I'll tell you right now, Sarah Hildebrand at plus, plus 1,500. Absurd. I'm I'll, betting Sarah I'll take Hildebrand. It. I'll take it. That yeah, is I'll smart money. And we have Dom Parrish, uh, 53 kilograms at plus 350. Yep. Uh, Helen... Uh, Morales at 150. The only female I did not have the opportunity to interview is our second favorite American at plus yeah. 125 or yeah, plus 150. Then we have Kayla Maracle at plus 200. Amit Elor, the only favorite at minus 125. And then finally, Kennedy Blades at plus 300. What's your smart money, dumb money? Elor. In the women's. Elor. I'm, smart money. Yeah, I'm selling the house and I'm putting all everything I own on that. Wow. Oh, she's young, very young, very schmung. young. How about another? Young Nobody's one? beating her. How about Kennedy Blades coming in at plus three hundred? How interesting is that? She just knocked off, knocking off Adeline Gray to get here. Who Adeline Gray would have been minus money if yeah. she wanted to get here. And Kennedy Blades, with if you do those odds, Kennedy Blades seems like smart money to me. You know, Adeline Gray. How is she not a head coach somewhere? Now, well, I'm talking well, even a men's program. It doesn't matter at this point. Well, she's Everything talking. she's accomplished, the knowledge that she has. And look at it. She's just one of them amazing human beings. You've seen her. Right after she's done wrestling, she's holding two little toddlers. Like, dude. I think she was named like woman of the year. I wonder if she made her husband breakfast that morning before she went out to wrestle. <laughs> Probably. Well, you know how old lazy me. men get at times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. But, all right, what were you? What were you about to bring up there? Um, okay, back back to <coughs> you came up with this idea, and we we get to laughing about. Okay, here we are. We're little rinky dink podcast. We do it for free. We don't make any money or anything. We'd like to make money. I mean, I'm trying to really, make money. I don't personally care, but it's got to be, it's got to <laughs> remain fun. I'd like to see you make some money. You got a business going and you put a lot of time into this. You could be off doing other stuff. So, uh, anyway, don't understand how anyone's got, I don't think we're nasty to anyone. So, I, I can't even put the, the points together why our show would be absolutely disgust someone at where they're so much where every week they're blasting us on the comments although we do oh, have okay. a good laugh over it okay however you came up with an idea and it was like zach that's brilliant that's the thing that we're complaining about it's not the comment it's the hiding the hiding like a little baby hiding yeah. you guys you guys are horrible <laughs> that's kind of what it is. I know. And I'll tell you one. I'll tell you something. I and uh, yeah, I removed some users' comments from last week, and I'll tell you exactly why, dude. I don't mind negative comments at all. I think we made that very clear. I, yes. I must encourage some of them. I made a commercial promoting one of our negative comments. That's true. That's true. But yeah. when it gets to the point. I'm pretty sure this dude was getting his rocks off on... No. Okay, you're not going to be knocking your rocks off on our on negative... Getting your rocks off on us. Oh, By negative comments, it got a little weird. I removed him. And here, you can redeem yourself. Anyone who ever is removed right can here. redeem yourself. Right here. You come on. You call into the Friday Show Live. Show now, his face. Show, show your face and have a real conversation. You are allowed. You are granted... Regranted access, full access. Yeah, I, you talk about laying out. The I think a guy. Cloth, I think a guy had to remove laying it. out a meal for someone. There you go. Come feast. Except we kind of like you to just be you. Uh, it kind of reminds well, me of BEG wrestling. There's a guy that uses. Oh yeah, -E I also found wrestling. that. You let me know someone's making comments on other podcasts under this R name of BEG wrestling, and quite frankly, guy getting his not the most. Off. 
not the greatest comments. So he's out there blasting other people, and uh, the first thing I'm thinking is that where other people is like, oh, these these jerks over BG wrestling. Did you see what they they wrote on our comments? Whoa, whoa, hey, Mister. Uh, B.E.G. Wrestling. Why are you afraid to be you? Huh? That's all yeah. I want to know. Is I mean, just, could we be more just open be you. than That's all. having a Friday show with live call-in opportunity? Hey, you want to have a Better yet, come on our show. Okay, show your face. Show that you're a man. <laughs> not, a little, not a little baby. You're not hiding little troll. All this, this term troll. Yeah. Well, I understand what troll means now. They hide. They hide in the bushes out there, and you're out there working, and trolls come up, and they just little, almost like a little fly that won't. He comes up. He, I know, I know. And then he, well, as soon as you got to the point, they they think they're getting something. There's something off of our show. No, you're not knocking your rocks off on us, okay? Yes. Yes. Small wiener, smaller wiener. Although I think was his name. There's a. <laughs> That's what I had to remove. No, I'm all for, come on, fr fr we have a day, uh, Friday night. Heck, if you only have a specific time you can call in, email us to say, I'm calling in at 8.07. Okay, I bet you we'll clear I, everything I out. I just challenge you to call in live yeah. on a Friday show to talk. I challenge you to talk to me live because yeah. I know you won't. I know you won't. Okay? <laughs> Enough said. That's why your comments are removed. But you have a chance to get it back. Have a chance to get it back. Redeem yourself. Yeah. And Amen. I also want to take a moment and just thank all the people that just, they have wonderful things to say. We screw up all the time. Well, well here's the other thing. Once it becomes so derogative and volatile, no, we're not here to promote volatility and like negativeness. Okay. Yeah. Just negative. Once it gets to the point of promoting negativeness. No, dude, we're yeah. about, I mean, have we not disagree with this? Be yes. specific about why and all that stuff just to be there like a negative Neil, negative Ned, just, uh, but anyway, I know they all the large majority are very nice people. Absolutely love, but I want to get to the all-star classic. Okay. Okay. This is annual flow of this is hard to consume right now because we got the Olympics right on our face, and that's great news. However, these Olympics are going to come, they're going to be gone, and we need to start putting work and thought into something that's right around Planning the corner ahead. and something that's very, very to me. This is even bigger than the well, I can't say that. This is as big as the Olympics, maybe the biggest the kickoff annual. to the next season, the all star classic. <sighs> I love these things. I They don't count on a guy's record. We're encouraging people to just go for it. It doesn't hurt your seating and stuff. Although, uh, you know, it probably will affect your seating. <laughs> like we're all going to remember. Yeah. But I have what I have. BG it, Wrestling Rankings coming soon, by the way. Uh, yes. My, my dream matchups for the All-Star Classic. Now, I understand, and I even commented to to Christian Powell's about, I can imagine how much work this takes to put this together. And he said something, I didn't even think about this. Really, the hardest part is the coaches. The kids, the wrestlers, they want to go. Wanna, yeah. They want to go. Let's go. That sounds good. The coaches are kind of objecting to, uh, what? I don't I don't need my star to get hurt at some all-star. Well, coaches, that's just yeah. live. Can we live a little bit? Well, they got to start the seating manipulation early. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, here's mine. I'd like to hear if you. Woo! Whoa! Lightning! Whoa! First time okay. On the show. <laughs> I said, "Here's mine," and I don't even have to add right, the sound effects right out of the gates. Just because we know him so well, I have Ramos in there against Figs. And you say, well, Ramos isn't even one of the top three uh, wrestlers at 125. He is to me. After I seen what he can do, um, I thought that was very cool that Spencer grabbed Ramos to practice for the Olympics. I know. How about that? Now, you talk about a guy that's not on a, that's on a mission. And who's over it. Yeah. And just out the wind. I mean, you talk about fueling. You. you every day you have to go practice this guy that took away my my dream yeah and nothing personal against uh ramos but that was 
That was, that was ballsy cool. right there. I, that was cool. That, that was yeah. a man move. That was, that was a, a man, man move. move right there. He showed up face to face. Showed so his I face. Got, I got Figs against Ramos to kick this thing off. Okay. The next match. This is very intriguing to me. Probably or we pr- will see this at some point, but let's see it right out of the gates. Crookham against Ayala. I want to see it, Zach. I want to see that match. And, take Crookham. Okay. Also, take Figs in the first one. Yes. Figs now, came through with me in fantasy last year. Mendez and Bartlett have put together how many very close matches. I got to give it to Mendez. He was, he was done. He was cooked, filleted. It's over. And he pulled off that standing Gramby and pulled it out of his back pocket for that title. And all credit to Bartlett. Because he took it in stride. That that had to sting. Bartlett had a smile on his face. Yeah, it was a little and, weird. Well, Some people didn't like that. <laughs> no! It, this is just a wrestling match. Oh, it a little reversed effort there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even I want to see them two again. Because them two are very, very, very close. And anybody that says that, oh, obviously Mendez has that locked up. Uh, and... We can't forget Alirez. Understand that. And others. But uh, right now, I'm, as far as an entertaining match, that's the match I want to see. Now we're getting into the good ones. I'm telling you, folks, these are very good. I want to see Van Ness against Henson, the national mm. champ Henson, Caleb Henson. And I'm telling there you. There is Van Ness now. Yeah. He's healed. Let's go. Let's go. It's been a year, right? Bam. Love that. Okay. Right out of that match, let's go. This, to me, probably is going to be the final. It's between three people, uh, really, to me. Uh, but these two are certainly Shapiro and Panera Johnson. Hmm. Panera Johnson, that's going to be an exciting match. I'm and are we going to get the Shapiro this year that we expected to see last year? Well, you know, that's you know, a big question for Cornell fans. Yeah, he probably wrestled the whole year with with part of a concussion. And, and you know, right here, you know, even my parents, they were in a uh, car accident. And thank the Lord, they're okay. But mom took a concussion. They got a little beat up. And Yeah, they got beat up. Dad has got some broken bones in his face. Everything's good. Everything's sitting where it needs to be. Everybody's going to heal, and we thank the Lord that they're they're fine. But even Mom admits, with concussion, I mean, it takes a while. It takes a while. And remember, he continued to wrestle right after taking a major concuss- concussion. I think that's what happened with Shapiro last year. There at the end of the year, he was coming on. He ends up taking third. But that is a matchup I'm really intrigued with. Then we're going to go to Hamidi against Welsh. And really, I'd like to see Arnold against Welsh. But a lot of people would say, well, Arnold hasn't uh, deserved to be in the All-Star Classic. You know, he wrestled one or two, three times so far. He hasn't. He shouldn't be in this. Okay, I'll go with that. Come on, Hamidi. Let's put you in there. Really, what I want to see is Arnold against Welsh because I think the styles, yeah. it may be boring. Maybe really boring, but be. I, I'm just intrigued who may win that. Here's another one. I You talk big about brands could shock the world this year. That's my sleeper pick, Nelson Brands. Well, that's put him up against the second best right out of the gates. Plot. Brands I'm against sure Plot. Would. And you say, well, why don't you put Brands against Kekheisen? That's because I'm saving Kekheisen. I want Strachi. No, Strachi and Kekheisen. To go, yeah. I want well, Strachi's going up ninety-seven. Well, can't we just meet halfway somewhere? Because I got another weight class. I want to do the same thing. <laughs> but uh, Strachi and Kekheisen, in case Strachi's going up to ninety-seven, he's probably not all the way there yet. This is perfect. I want to see that match. Actually, that might be the second match to the end. Second most intriguing matchup. Yeah, I got because I got Kirk against Bastida. I knew that was coming. I want to see that and but I would have the second to the last one I would have Strachi against Kekheisen and then as the grand final another match where we we kind of meet halfway but not really 
I want to see Mess and Brink again so cool. I want to see it. You want to see it. You want to see it. We all want to see it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Hey, some, one of them big dogs with the money, let's start throwing some money some, where real fun sits. This would be real fun right here. And, and that would be just... Couldn't Levi wrestle in this since everyone is now assuming he's redshirting this year? Technically, yes. And that would be cool to see Levi. Yeah. I would love I to mean, see... at least get a match in. Give us something this year, Levi. Levi against Shapiro. Yeah. That would be... I might enjoy that more than, than Panera Johnson against Shapiro. But that's coming, folks. How about Levi versus Messenbrink? I would like that at the All-Star man, Classic. Man, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Look, the Olympics are here. And this is just the greatest time in the world. But right behind that, we got this is coming. And I we got to start doing work on it now. And, man, I... Them I'm poor, sure Flo is. Them poor guys that actually have to do the work. Yeah, it's. I'm <laughs> sure it's a lot of work there. Yeah, I'm sure they hate people like you who sit behind the scenes and just say, just, I wish they did this. Yeah, and this I wish they like did this. this. I don't. Guy. I'm doing that with the Olympics. This I wish the Olympics had 30. Why don't you put some work in there, You're big boy? <laughs> killing me. Big man. boy, that's all I'm hearing is <laughs> pa pa pa. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> Hopefully we see. Get a couple of those. That'd be nice. But Okay, look, I know we're coming to the end of our first segment. I asked this question on the Facebook page and actually Jason Bryant gave me a very good answer, but I'd like to actually hear from you guys. Here's my question, Zach. Even back when I was in school, it wasn't because, you know, I wanted it to be that way. So I stretched the truth. The truth was Pennsylvania was known as the number one wrestling state. Even back in the late 70s, early 80s, to this day, Pennsylvania is known as the number one wrestling. Well, I, well, I just watched a uh, Flow uh, episode where they were asking, okay, rank the, the states. I think every one of them had Pennsylvania as number one, but there's, there's stats galore. Which state has had the most All-Americans in, at the Nationals? Um Hmm. Every year, probably it's been it been a string of probably thirty years. Pennsylvania. There's a whole bunch of other indicators. A lot of people are making the argument that okay, Pennsylvania is number one at folk style, but you know Illinois and stuff and other uh, other states are very very strong at freestyle. And I don't know about that. Pennsylvania is tough at freestyle too. Here's my question though. It doesn't. Why? What is the leading factor that they've been able to be there as number one? All along? you got tough communities and families in Ohio. Maybe it's the number of wrestlers involved that give Pennsylvania a uh, advantage over a smaller state like Ohio. I don't know. California, they got all them people. You know, how does Pennsylvania like? I'm sure in the comments, you guys will give us a, we'll get plenty of the great answers. My only answer is, it, obviously, the train's rolling and tradition has, but how did it be that way? I mean, it's just weird that it's just Pennsylvania. If you were asking me, what's probably the number one wrestling state 
I would probably say New York or California because common sense, that's where mm. so many people are. I think it's probably just the culture. It's almost like college football in the South, man. It's been pe- people have taken more pride in football in the South for longer. And that's resulted in the culture that it is down there. People care more. That's probably the same in Pennsylvania. People yeah. just care more. It's been around longer. They, they take the pride. They take pride in Pennsylvania of being the wrestling state. I know they, they just dominated at Fargo. And we didn't even get into the Fargo results. But we kind of really stretched this first segment out. And I know that we got to get into other stuff. But... Um, well, and in addition to that, if people were caring about it more, it probably leads to all the better coaches going to Pennsylvania, and it probably leads to all the better coaches getting paid more in Pennsylvania. That's true. So you expand that That's over true. 10, 20, 30 years, because you're right. What, the Dapper Dan? I mean, as long as I can remember, it's been Pennsylvania number one. and Yeah, yep. I take a lot of pride in that. Now they right? call it <laughs> the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic or whatever they call it. But uh, And the mm-hmm. number of colleges that are D1. That are heck with we used to have, uh, you know, a lot of major Edinburgh, a major player with all the D1 schools, other smaller schools, Lock Haven, that are in Pennsylvania. That actually, okay, they're not top five, but uh, they're right there. I mean, they're they're Someone the real why deal. Illinois isn't better in college with all their high school talent. That's a good question. They're obviously not keeping their talent because Illinois is Low. Na- nasty good. Yeah, they are. They just are, and we see that in the the Kane and Websters of the world. There's there's some Illinois guys that are going to be making noise in the the years to come, and it's going to get exciting. But uh, anyway, just a thought. Love to get your two cents on it. Do you have in any the meantime, thoughts? Go ahead. On my law of reverse effort for Penn State video, I wasn't meant to ask you about. I absolutely was, I was impressed with it. I was kind of taken off guard because um, I was thinking, okay, Zach, you're trying to stretch a uh, a 20% of the pie into a bigger piece. But then I watched it and I thought it through more and I am... I came away thinking this is a significant piece of the pie it is just the whole mindset. And or you could say it's the whole pie itself. It's the whole culture. The whole mindset that you have, um, really, it makes sense. And it's it's not only do you perform better by not being t- so tense, and there's such a thing as trying too hard that you can't even reach your true potential, but... To enjoy it while you're doing it, uh, n- there's no doubt there that is a ginormous part of Penn State's success. But I think it's throughout of all all wrestling, now, all college wrestling, and or you could even say all of USA wrestling. And will be interesting to watch these Olympics because I think that's becoming like an accepted Mindset. part of the game plan of USA wrestling is really kale has kind of led the charge and said and showed look how much you can dominate by going in this direction and i think all college coach heck you see tom brands you know i hear him in interviews we're here to have fun they don't have fun and we're gonna we're gonna work harder to have fun We're just going to work harder so we do start having fun. No. <laughs> I love Tom Brands. But, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, dang, on. Uh, by the way, I was quite disappointed. I was all up, ready to go. I had, I had notes galore last week. And here, my co-host, Nareem, showed up. Last Never week. even showed up. Yeah, well, a couple weeks ago I said I was going to I don't care, Cal. Now I really don't care to Cal go back there again. I tell you right now. What the world? No. Well, real quick, yeah. First of all, I cannot speak less highly of American Airlines than maybe any other company in the world. We flew back from Caracal, then we get to Miami, and we're supposed to fly connecting flight. 
Well, it's delayed three hours. Great. So it's from 6.30 p.m. Now we're 9.30 p.m. Then we get on the plane and sit for an hour until they say something's still wrong with the plane. We got to take it back off. We're going to uh, reschedule for 2 a.m. Okay, now I'm like, this American Airlines. I know these Boeing planes are a joke, too. Boeing is another joke company out there. <laughs> anyway, uh, then we get off. I go, okay, I got to sleep for a couple hours. I literally lay my head down. And the second I lay, m- by the way, I'm so mad right now. I can't even talk to Kelly. Because <laughs> in my brain, I'm like, this is her fault, dude. Like, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly it wasn't Kelly's fault. Unbelievable. And then, so I'm so mad. And then I, the second I lay my head down, she's like, no, they're, it just got rescheduled for like 6 a.m. And then an hour later, it just got canceled entirely. And oh. then they're like, okay, you can get a, a pass for a hotel. Your luggage will be off the plane. Our luggage is stuck on the plane. I'm like, Kelly, I'm getting a car, and I'm freaking driving home. I don't care. Wow. And But then it's like, we couldn't get our luggage. They said anywhere from 45 minutes to four hours that we'll have it off. This is like 2 o'clock in the morning. I haven't slept oh. for like two days because I had sunburn so bad the night before. Oh. And so then I'm like, all right, we go and sleep at the hotel for a couple hours, go back in the morning, get the luggage. And I drive, drove 17 hours straight from Miami the whole way home. <sighs> and that was my second out-of-country experience. The first one, uh, yeah, we got canceled in Naples, Italy overnight. It, almost as worse of a story. Anyway, American Airlines, complete joke. How many miles did you drive? It was over 1,000, almost 1,100, exactly. One day. <sighs> I, I'm waiting on Guinness Book of World Records to get back to me. Single day driven uh, time. Anyway, no, listen. One thing I did experience, American Airlines, absolutely terrible. In fact, I'm asking people for help. They couldn't even speak words out of their mouth. That's how pathetic, pathetic the airline industry is. I'm, I'm praying Elon takes over an airline industry. That's how pathetic it is. But then I experienced the other extreme on my drive home when I stopped at Bucky's. Okay? okay. Bucky's. Bucky's. Beaver convenience store. Now, folks, I want to take a second. I want to show you the Bucky's commercial I just found on the internet. And uh, we'll come back to you right after that. Oh, I'm fuel, and you know what that means. I got to grab my keys and drive down to Bucky's. And you already know I'm going to need a buggy. Because, baby, I'm about to give them all my money. Ooh, these toilets so dang clean. They make me want to get some brisket and a sweet iced tea. I'm feeling perky off this jerky. Oh, I'm feeling green. Yeah, I might just have to work here. Do you know what I mean? It's a southern thing. Ain't no place for your peace. So bring your buddies and all your money. That beaver's king of the road trip country. Yeah, we get lucky when we see buggies. Whatever you need here, it's not very far. Cause they got stuff for your home It's stuff for your car And if you're a little hungry, baby, you're the star They got brisket, jerky, fudge, and it goes on and on The cleanest restrooms I've ever seen The best service wow. And maybe the best food It's at a convenience store I saw the two extremes of our industry A union American Airlines <laughs> Pathetic I will never fly them again And I encourage no one to ever fly American Airlines and then I saw Bucky's, dude. And uh, it was like, can we get these Bucky's employees into American Airlines, please? Please. Please. Okay. That was number one. Number two. <laughs> that was only number one. All inclusives are a scam. I'm sorry, they're a scam. We had an all inclusive in Curacao. And yeah, it's great. Sounds great. You don't have to spend any money. Okay, let me tell you what they do. Let me tell you what they do. And they think they're smart. First of all, I've never seen people move slower in all my life. So. Can I get another drink? I, I said to Kelly, I said, I'm going to go up to this dude, and this is how I'm going to have, this is how I'm going to start the conversation. I'm going to be like, dude, what's wrong? What's wrong, man? And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say, wait, can you do that? And then he's going to be like, yeah. And then he's going to move real fast. And I'm going to say, you can actually move fast? Why don't you do that when you're making my drinks? Okay? Oh, that'll go over good. Yeah. Like, just move. You guys got to move faster. So it's a whole slow scheme. And then I'm pretty sure they just watered down all the liquor. Oh. And so it's free. And then they give you the... So it's free. You don't have to tip. Kelly says, you don't have to tip. Well, then after every single drink, everyone... Oh. Oh, I don't 
want the tip, but I get a guilt trip every single time uh, I get a drink. I don't even want it. I said, let me pay for good service. I yes. want to pay it. Yes. Those are a scam. What was the other one? Okay, I had a couple other. Okay, cruises. Because so Kelly says, let's go on a cruise. You wrote, you wrote yeah, these down. Yeah, I wrote these down. And I said, wrote these down. So at this point, I'm already up to here with these vacations. And she says, let's go on a cruise. I said, I don't even know if I want to go out on a boat. And Kelly says, quote, they said, she said, it's so cool, it doesn't even feel like you're on a boat. <laughs> I said, what? I said, then why are we going on a boat? Why are we going to go on a boat if the whole point of the experience is to make it seem like we're not on a boat? So why are we going on a boat? It makes, literally, it doesn't even oh. make sense. Doesn't even make sense. Oh, I bet you were quite pleasant to be around during the Kelly's say, she's uh, scared to ask me to poor, go on vacation Poor again. Kelly. I pity that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't no, even exactly. talk. I was so angry. And then I and then I, this guy, it's two o'clock in the morning. There's only limited people. I'm like, dude, where do I go to get like the hotel voucher? And he he keeps doing this. I'm not joking. And I wanted, oh. I was like this close to just punching him because I felt like I was in jail and I felt like I don't even care if I go to jail. You guys got me in jail here. Take at least we take the I wanna get I hate this place. No stores were open. It's a complete joke, dude. Miami is probably the worst airport. Also, you combine the worst planes with the worst American Airlines at oh. the worst airport. Never again. Never oh, again. Zach, what was so funny for us is our family has this video sir uh messenger that we all keep in contact. So we were seeing little sniblets of your frustration and anger and it was quite frankly it was it was kind of funny. walking around it was so kind of funny. funny i was so yeah. mad i couldn't even talk and i was just getting i was like kelly and and at one point kelly said i'm waiting for the 6 a.m flight because we had gotten delayed from 2 a.m to 6 a.m i had already i'm like this close to off the rails i said oh you're gonna do that 6 a.m flight i said i'm driving home kelly you take that 6 a.m flight and then i wow. took a 30 minute walk cooled off a little bit and then i laid my head down at which point she then called me back immediately and said because i went to another section i was like i can't even, i don't even want to see people Dude, I, this, and then she said oh they canceled it and i said no oh, <laughs> you know the company i used to work for uh they closed it reminds me of that company a lot you've seen a lot of stuff where you think this is such common sense for instance like wouldn't it be kind of smart to okay go completely over this plane this plane is ready to go before Everything you board everyone up and yeah now let's move it out and let's put the people in after we've made sure this plane oh that's here's how that started we got on the plane and they said hey we have a light a little indicator light issue mechanics on here it's gonna be five to ten minutes 45 minutes later he comes on again and says uh, so we should actually know, folks, mechanics soon, but we should know in 10 minutes we're testing uh, the, the cabin pressure. And then 10 minutes later, uh, he says, yeah, it's actually a real problem, folks. We're going to have to oh, onboard you. I did feel better because we're talking about a plane full of people from Baltimore. Yeah. I did feel better. At the 30-minute point, point when we're sitting on the plane everyone in baltimore on that plane starts getting real angry dude and oh, i i looked at yeah. kelly like pulled you so okay. well okay and my little uh scenario there was very simplified i'm sure certain there's certain things that they can't test until right at the end everyone's in to make sure the cabin pressure is good that's make sure you know there's some things that it's just is going to be a headache sometimes so then we drove home 17 hours the next day turns out well the next available flight they had for us to get out was like tuesday was almost 48 hours later and i said this is this is such a joke dude this is such a joke now thank goodness there's some new law passed like they are mandated to reimburse us now oh like at least like 500 or, or or three times the ticket value and i said how are any of these airlines staying in business yeah they can't yeah. So the government's just going to subsidize them more money. Oh, yeah. don't even get me started in the politics. So here's a free union. You guys just screw up whenever you want. Yeah. However big you want, we don't care. If you do, we'll just give you more free money. Like, what a joke. Can someone step up in the airline That's industry, That's the one dude? thing. You know, not to get, we are really off track of wrestling here. <laughs> but back at my old company that closed up is uh, some guys, there's no fear of getting fired. And that is a bad little scenario to be in because there, the ugliness in certain humans, it, it comes to the top and they don't care. And I mean, they 
absolutely could care less. They can't fire me. Yeah. They, they, there's no way they can fire me. And even if they do, I'll get my job back. And so to put a little care into what they did, Zach, I go out and we had doubles. The, the pintle hook wasn't even hooked. That, that happened so many times. Believe me, when you did a pre-trip, you did a pre-trip because I don't want to lose my back trailer as I'm going heading towards in the middle of New York City, losing my back trailer, flipping over top of people. I mean, you just... Anyway. Well, I forgot to even tell you. At 2.30 in the morning, once we finally secured the rental car, we walked down into the parking lot to get our rental car. We can't find it. We're asking people. Again, no assistance. It's all just numbered in the parking spots. Yeah. We finally find our car. We're walking up to it. There's a dude with his daughter who has it started up. He's about to pull out. And we're like, whoa, this is our car. He's like, oh. He says, well, honestly, someone took mine, so I was just going to take... Like, what? what is going on around here? I was just going to get out of my car, bro. And my car. <laughs> this is what I'm sitting right next what, to it. Yeah, what you, yeah, the keys are just in them all. So people are just taking... I'm like, dude, this is a clown show. Wow. It's an absolute clown show here. Wow. Like, what am I going to do? You're just going to leave with this car and then return a different car that you apparently rented. What, what is happening? <laughs> What's happening? Dude? Anyway. You were already worked up, weren't you, Zach? I was so a little mad, worked dude. up there. Three days of vacation, from three and a half days of traveling. Like I don't, don't even do it, dude. And I, and you knew it was coming too. On that two ep- two weeks ago, that episode, you knew I had a feeling something bad was happening. Wow. <laughs> it was. Anyway, it was a blast. We had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have well, else. we're glad you all got back, and. <laughs> Poor Kelly. Pam. Kelly's a travel agent, too. Let's, so. let's get Kelly something, some sort of care package or something, what she just went through. No. Well, that's when I stepped up as a man, and I said, Kelly, get in the car, and I drove the whole way home straight, 17 hours. I said, you're not even driving. No, I'm driving. Wow. And the only stops we made were at Bucky's to get gas wow. and some brisket uh, <laughs> and and go to the bathroom. Bucky's. Unbelievable. How was the food at Bucky's, by the way? Unbelievable, dude. Get a cheesesteak wrap. Get the brisket pulled pork. No offense, but, you know, we have our sheets up here. Man, and no there's Bucky's. sometimes where, you, well, you, I got to grab something to eat at sheets. She's terrible. Uh, uh, you want to rank fast food restaurant or, or, <laughs> or convenience store food? Yeah. Bucky's number one. Uh, Wawa up there. Get a Wawa Chipotle cheesesteak. Wawa might be number two. Wow. Yeah. After that, I don't know. Royal Farms has good chicken. Okay. Right? Maybe Royal right? Farms three. Hmm. All right. Well, are we taking a break or are we done or what? Do you have other stuff? Yeah. I don't. I got nothing else. I'm done. Folks. I'm done. We'll be back. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Until next week. See you guys. See ya.